Hey everybody, welcome back to HSC Podcast 56. Getting up there. Uh, we are still in March Madness. It's That'll madness. be the, the topic. It's pretty exciting getting down to the end here. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like on the YouTube channel. If you're listening on our Anchor or Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Thanks for listening. And uh, don't forget to comment in the, in the comment section. So. All right, so obviously last few podcasts we've been talking about March Madness. You know, we had HSC podcast bracket, which at this point, you know, you wouldn't think it would be done, but it's done. So uh, Derek, Big Smooth, wins the, wins the HSC podcast, and we're not even done with the final four yet. <laughs> uh, we were just talking about this, but one we had one team from all of us in the final four but go back and you look at it like there's not even a top four like a top three seed in the final four right the highest seed is a four which just kind of talking about the tournament in general i think that's to me that's crazy when i looked at when you look at that and you're like there's not a top three seed out of any bracket i mean you got four top three seeds out of each so one in each or one two three one two three one two three one two three so that's 12 total top one to one two and three seeds and not a single one of them make it to the final four yeah so and you only had what oh wait, i guess was xavier a three nah yeah, so uh, xavier, Kansas I think, I think, texas losing but it could have been yeah, yeah, Xavier and Texas could have been top three. Xavier or Texas was a two, Xavier is a three, right? Yeah, and then Kansas State was a three. So yeah. we almost had some favorites, but right. But still not even a one or a two. Texas could have oh. been the only one there, but uh so you know, just general, you know, what do you guys think about the tournament so far? You know, what's well it's kind of general like, thoughts. You know. In years past, you know, they've talked about how, oh, this might be anyone can win. And then it always turns out like the one seeds and the two seeds make it to the final four. Early day. And so every year you think, oh, this is going to happen. And once in a while, someone this is like the first time it's just been like all hell breaks loose. And it's kind of cool. I like it. Because, you know, it comes back yeah. to. It's not all the freshman phenom making it to the final four or to the championship game. It actually matters that you have people that play together. Well, that trend, that trend has been like the last five years. That that kind of the senior or the fifth year kind of trend has been, you know, going on. Like the whole idea of McDonald's All American freshmen, it's not going to be successful. You know, they, they they've proven that fact. It's like. You got grown men out there playing basketball versus little boys, and the grown men are going to win. And it's been going on for like five years. So, and now you got the transfer, mm -hmm. and you're going to have more players moving around. Like they, they talked about San Diego State, like all the transfers they have on their team. Miami, yeah. too. Yeah, Miami, yeah, too. Yeah, Miami. Well, and, Kansas uh, State's team was built of transfers because they all left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it, that's just going to be, and next year's going to be more ridiculous on how many people, you know, they, you know, just transfer. You know, and, and I hear, you know, I don't know if you guys watched uh, 60 Minutes on Charles Barkley. He, uh, he talked about how, you know, Barkley's very upset about, you know, the state of college basketball because he thinks, oh yeah, the top twenty-five team. You know, they they're they're you know over the next couple of years they're gonna they're gonna hoard all the talent in 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 college basketball. You know what? College basketball is different. You know, if you can coach players up, you can beat those guys. Yeah. I think it actually makes it more interesting. I mean, look what happened this year. I mean. The transfer portal has been around the last, you know, last couple of years. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's, 
it makes it a little more interesting. I mean, I, I guarantee you Florida Atlantic didn't benefit so much from the transfer portal, you know? Well, a lot of it is, you know, I forgot what player it was, but he was like Kentucky's fourth leading scorer last year, and he transferred to this other school, to I think Florida Atlantic, right? And he was their leading scorer this year. So it's a lot of them are like, I don't want to be second or third fiddle. I want to go to a place where I can play and be the man. So like with Barkley's whole thing, it's like, no, you're not going to have super teams in college because they don't care about being super teams. They care about being known, recognized, and getting money and getting Trust drafted. Me, I, I, I understand where Barkley's coming from, but if you look at the big picture, I mean, it just makes it more competitive. I mean, yeah. if you're one of these smaller schools, like, okay, top 25 schools, like, okay, you get all the guys. It makes it, it makes teams more hungry to beat them. You know, I, 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 I get what he's saying. It is BS, but it could work out in the end. You know, I think it makes a big difference, you know, because basketball in particular, these guys are trying to get to the league, right? And, you know, the the Kentucky is a good example, but it, it that it works that way for a lot of teams, right? And it's not even you could transfer just from a team that's equal to you to go to a team equal to you. You don't have to go from a Kentucky to a Florida Atlantic, right? You could go from you know a Kentucky to a Duke, or you could go from you know a Princeton to a, a you know a Florida Atlantic, where you're you're still talking about being an equal transfer, but playing on a team for a coach that fits more your style you know, players that fit more or a team that's on coming up. Right. So maybe you get a team that does well in the tournament this year with some young, younger guys next year, they may get some good transfers in right. With a chance to, to win a national championship. And uh, what's so the transfer portal, I think it's really good for college basketball, but I don't think it's as good for college football. And the one one thing I don't like about it in college football is you now are taking away a lot of the scholarships from some of these younger, uh, especially around the offensive and defensive line and things, right? Because would you you don't want to necessarily bring in an 18, 19 year old kid that you have to build size and get going when you could just have a transfer in who's already a 300 pound dude, you know, that's gone through the strength thing and he's going to get that starting position in that scholarship so it's really hurting college football in that sense where i think it helps college basketball more so i I like it in college basketball i don't necessarily like it a lot in football yeah i mean people i mean you look at nick sabins and they're pretty upset about the whole process i mean let's let's distinguish between uh transfer portal and nil like, like Nick Saban, he's he's been a vocal critic of NIL, and I think it's it's kind of interesting to, to see that because it's like you guys have dominated college football for like fifteen years. I mean, when you think about it, they've been dominant since two thousand nine, right? And then all of a sudden, he's all upset, like, "Oh my god!" Like, you know, it's like all of a sudden they're going to take away his thunder. <sighs> Not quite. Like, you guys are still going to be dominant. I mean, you're still top three in recruiting every year. Maybe George is catching up with you. I mean, but I don't really think that has much to do with NIL. You know? Just the matter of fact is, they a lot of these programs have a long way to catch up with Alabama. Oh, absolutely. It's just stupid. But they Good can luck. lose – you here's the the problem is now Alabama can lose you know a um a guy who's developing in the program in his second or third year who wants to go to a different team where he gets more starts or you know he he's looked at more because he's getting more playing time and that does hurt their longevity in a sense of building you know these powerhouses that's and what that, that's what I could see him being upset about, about that. Yeah. Did you hear what uh, Izzo said uh, also the other day about it? I mean, he's pissed too. He's like, you know, it, it, some of the blue chip old school coaches, they're 
they were upset about it. You know, it it is kind of garbage when you think about it. I mean, what was it? You know, Derek, you said that thing about uh, Arch Manning making three point what two million a year. Right. And then this uh, this year he's making, and then he's you got Caleb right Williams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Caleb. Yeah, Arch Manning three point seven. Caleb Williams, 2.6, and he's already in the league, though. So, or right, he's been right. in college for a little bit. Travis Hunter, 1.7. The hell's Travis Hunter? I don't know. Shador Sanders, 1.5. And Drake May, 1.5. Yeah. Who is Travis Hunter? That's... I don't know. I get... Well, so I guess those amounts are hard to wrap your head around, but also, like, it's hard to. All you know, not give them something, right? Uh-huh. They gotta. It, it's hard to argue the fact that they shouldn't be paid in some in some sense. Well, it, it, it's almost like a. I was talking with because my uncle was complaining about it, and I said it's a down payment. Right. It basically, that that's this is what it is. It's a down payment. They're getting their they're getting part of their money in advance. Which I understand that <laughs> it's kind of wild when you think about it. It is really wild comparatively. It, it I mean, Travis, Travis Hunter is a corner that went from Jackson State to Colorado. So, oh he yeah, oh yeah, I Dion, know who that guy is it's Dion territory. <laughs> yeah, so obviously yeah. Dion was like, "Give this guy money so he can come with me." Yeah, yeah and so then they also. Didn't they bring in the top blue chip quarterback too for to Colorado? Yeah. So now they got him that transferred sure. over who's in the top cornerback, and now they've got the best recruit cornerback too. Dude, the, yeah, well they got yeah. It's yeah, they're bringing over players in Colorado. It, it's going to make things interesting next year. Next year for the Pac-12, the last year for USC and UCLA is going to be really interesting. See what happens next year. We have funny. Colorado and like Oregon State were the top two teams. Yeah. I mean Oregon State's got a chance for sure. Yeah. Oregon State's got a solid team. And but but yeah, Washington's gonna be good. Oregon is just Oregon is Oregon. They're not gonna be any worse. Yeah. Um Washington's gonna be tough. And you know what? I wouldn't sleep on Arizona. Arizona, I mean, Ari- you know, they they're it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting year next year in Pac-12 for a USC and UCLA leave. Well, yeah, and in UCLA, I don't. It's hard to think that they're gonna be back up at top again. USC, I think, obviously, Caleb Williams. You know, oh, yeah. it's, they got to do well. Um, but Washington, you know, great setup for to win the the Pac-12 next year. Oregon just like you said they're just going to be Oregon and they're going to be there probably lose in the end. You know what's funny is watching you know watching that Cotton Bowl and watching Jerry Rice's son play. Wasn't that wild? Yeah. I mean that's that's Jerry Rice's son and he bald. Yeah. That dude that dude is he looks a little special. Well, there's a yeah. lot of things wrong with that, though. The fact that we're watching Jerry Rice's son play. <laughs> well, what's well, well, we have more kids have to watch play, dude. We're old. <laughs> Jerry, Rice's son, Jerry Rice had his son when he was old. Because Marvin right. Harrison's son is going to be coming out. Right, right. right. Like way after. Yeah, Marvin Harrison. <laughs> yeah, he, he's pretty good, too. But Jerry Rice's right. son. And you can just see it, you, you know, that touchdown, the second touchdown pass where he like, you know, you wrapped around the. I'm like, oh my god, dude, that's totally Jerry. Right. Man, but you got it. Totally. I mean, it my you got. I got to think Marvin Harrison Jr.'s the best receiver. He's gonna. Out. Oh yeah, he's gonna be. He's more. He's gonna be more. Um, yeah, he's gonna. He's gonna be. You know, he's gonna be top ten. Well, they're they're talking about the top five. The top five is like it's because it's been a while, right? Since there's been a top five receiver. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I thought I was I thought that, that was one of the storylines there. But regardless, um it's funny though, because everybody's already talking about him and it's not even like he's not even out in the draft. So like because <laughs> he was at the pro right, day. The pro day, yeah. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, man, this guy's great next year. <laughs> Can't wait for next year. Yeah. You're like, by the way, CJ Stroud's here too. <laughs> You know, uh, so yeah, uh, the, the transfer port is an interesting thing. Um, I I do like. I miss the old the old days though of college basketball when they were building those dynasty teams because that was fun to watch because you had a lot of them right. It wasn't just one dynasty team. It was. It didn't matter when you got to the Elite Eight, you were playing a really solid team that had, you know, juniors and seniors and guys that have been playing for, for years together. Uh, but since you don't have that, now letting people transfer around and build teams up, and, and now you have teams like, you know, Florida Atlantic and Miami and, and all these, these teams that weren't expected to be in the Final Four and be in the Final Four. Um. So I wanted to... <laughs> So 2017, can you name the wide receiver that went number five overall? In 2017? Yeah. That was uh, the last wide receiver to go in the top ten. Like, top ten. <laughs> uh, was it a Raiders pick? No. Oh. <laughs> Because remember they picked the wide. I think maybe he was top ten though. But remember okay, they, so they, in 2017, three receivers went in the top ten. Wow, wow, so you're and six two years of them, ago. two of them are busts. Wow, it was Corey Davis went five. Really, God. Mike wow. Williams went seven to the Chargers, and John Ross. Went nine to the we Bengals. Nine, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, now I remember that year. How did you even come up with this, Derek? Why does Corey Davis? That's a stat right there. Dude, that's a good <laughs> And oh, after Corey those picks, okay, 10 through tw- ten through 13, okay, after that, Patrick Mahomes, right. Marshawn Lattimore, Deshaun Watson, Hassan Reddick. You, you forgot Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah, he was number two. <laughs> So in that top ten, you had Trubisky, <laughs> Solomon Thomas, Fournette, David, Corey Davis, John Ross, right? Corey yeah. Davis, oh, geez. that's horrific. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's uh, that I, might be um, why people don't want to take wide receivers in the top. Right. As well, well, because and that well, that was six years ago. <laughs> you're not going to have that problem this year because I don't think like. The no. top wide receiver, I think, is Addison, isn't or, it? Or um, what's his name from Ohio State? Yeah. One of those guys. Jackson. Think, Jackson. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh I think, yeah, yeah. But uh, it, it, they're they're around. They're, 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 they're the mid. <laughs> yeah, it's you got uh, those two, and then uh, what Johnston? There's like three or four that uh, any one Quentin. of them can go first, and then the guy, the kid from TCU. Yeah, yeah Johnston. Yeah, Quentin. Quentin Johnston. <laughs> um, but they also you have Josh Downs. Or North, North North Carolina guy. Yeah. yeah. He, I mean all around the same. They area. all can go in the first or even the second round. It's gonna be like well, because they were power ranking players, not based on like mock draft, but just based on quality of player. And uh uh Bijan Robinson is the number one. Although he's not going to get drafted number one, they say he's the most talented player, right, in the draft when they power mm-hmm. rank him. But they had, uh, they had Jackson, they had uh, Quinton, they had Addison and Downs in in like the top fifteen. Yeah. As far as just quality of player, right? When they just they're just power ranking them by skill. Well, I think. Um... If you go by also like um need, the first team that might do it is the Texans, right? At twelve. At twelve, right. To pair with a rookie quarterback. But they just got rid of uh Cooks, right? I mean, so Cooks they, too, yeah. they need to get some speed. So they're mo- more likely gonna go with Addison or uh Jackson Smith. 
right? That because you don't take a big guy there if you just got no, ready. No, I, I think it's going to be Najabu or Jabba, right? Isn't that because pair him with when well, no, they'll get CJ Stroud or Brian? Yeah. But I guess if you get CJ Stroud, then you pick him. But I think Addison still is is rated up there as well. Yeah. But the question is, though, because Downs and Quentin Johnson are just as good receivers. They're just different type of receivers, <laughs> right? right? They're they're speed receivers. They're route runners. Where uh, Downs and, and Johnson, they're going to go take the ball away. They're going to run their big men routes because they're both weird guys. Like, you keep seeing the weird, uh, you know, ESPN pops up with, like, the weird draft analysis like today it was like Addison going to the Saints like 29. I go, he's not gonna fall that far. Oh the yeah, there's no way he falls to 29. There's no way. No, like, no, oh yeah, no. we're gonna pair him with, you know, it's like no, it's like he, he, Addison's not gonna fall 29. I don't think so. That's just dumb. Yeah. Addison's too good. <laughs> yeah. I think it I depends know. on maybe that's Mel Kiper. Mel Kiper like fucking <laughs> yeah, you know, edibles or whatever the hell he's doing. It like, depends on what happens defensively, I think, because if if teams start going heavy on defense early, then some of those offensive right. guys slip mm-hmm. because now you can't wait on your defense. You know, you're like, gosh, everybody's taking defense. I got to get him. You know, so then your offensive guys do slip. So the draft kind of dictates how far guys slip sometimes. Also, the when you're talking about Zay Flowers, also so another guy, a different skill set, wide receiver. So it right. all depends on what kind of wide receiver they want. Yeah, and what team is right. you know gets into and again, if they if not a lot of defenses going and there's still some really good offensive players out there, they might just jump into offense. You know, or you know, depending right. on what it looks like. Well, depending on how the first ten picks go. There could be like three or four corners that are like highly rated still available. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, then guys, then teams start taking corners, you know, and then all of a sudden you can get Addison at fifteen to twenty, you know. Yeah, you might be taking, might be jumping on that. I saw one draft and I was like, these got they had Levis falling to the second round. Yeah, right. (laughs) I know. I was like, really. It's yeah. more like people people are now talking that Hendon Hooker. Oh God. I, I, if you're drafted in the top 15 now. Yeah, they're talking about the Seahawks getting the Hendon Hooker. It's like really? No. Come on. That's what they're saying. Not like, at their first pick, fifth. right? Their second pick? No, they're fifth. Oh my God. But I'd be happy with that. that oh yeah. You know why? <laughs> because Richardson was there's people That's people crazy. are just dreaming if they think that yeah. they're gonna take Hidden Hooker fifth Over overall. Yeah. Well plus I like Hidden Hooker, but he's 25. Yeah. You don't yeah. like he's not don't you guys remember Achilles Smith? <laughs> right. Well, and he's not, I mean, he's a good quarterback. I I would definitely draft him in the second round. Yeah. I but he's not that good of a quarterback to bring because he, he just doesn't have enough. You know, he hasn't been good for long enough to where you're like, man, he's been on the radar for a long time. You know, he's just been on the radar this year. Yeah. No, but I mean, I, I, you know, a top five pick like no, this noise. Of him, like, well, the Seahawks, no, they're not going to get Richardson. They're going to get hit hooker. Like, no, really? dude, this is so stupid. Man, hopefully. <laughs> Oh, it would uh, be because Richardson's gonna, and they they talked about it today. I mean, what's hard is watching Raider news because I, did you guys see the 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 since two thousand sixteen? I don't want to like, talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that you'll have a couple of drinks watching. That. I saw that. I was kidding. Oh you. man, garbage. That's funny. The, when Derek, she, you showed that stat about like teams that they had guys playing for them that they drafted. And yeah. What was it? That was over like a, how many years? 10 years or something like that? It was like five uh, years. Five years. And dude, the Raiders were so low. They were like 10,000 
and it, and like the top teams were at like whatever you know but then you like you look down the list and you're like oh man there's these teams down 30 40 thousand man they're horrible and then all of a sudden you get to the bottom list and it's just like if it's like a cliff drop off <laughs> and uh it's that's uh, right. the bears that don't draft well but man the raiders draft so really rare bad. no the well, raiders this is big. so for the bears this is like their draft if they don't hit on this it kind of cripples them a little bit yeah well i mean i think they did enough in free agency and to you know um to be competitive and and <laughs> they still have draft picks next year of course you know cuz they got a good trade out of that but they they need to for me i think they need to focus more on core players mm-hmm. this draft instead of going you know hype or fancy you know i'm okay with drafting a tackle at ninth it's fine with me yeah. like i don't care who's available give me one of those and there's there's three good tackles out there right you know and so i hope they do that as as hard as it is to say draft a tackle top 10 <laughs> because you want the you want the flashiness right well but i well, think I they think, should i think they got I, it i think i think Part of that is also, and I think a lot of teams, especially the Raiders, should, you know, you're also drafting backups for backups. And even if you're drafting a tackle at ninth, you know, I I, I think the days of drafting an offensive lineman in the top five should be over because you shouldn't put all your chips. Like, you're talking about, the most contentious part of football where anybody can get hurt just like that. At least a quarterback. I mean, you can't even touch a quarterback. <laughs> well, yeah. You know? but... but an offensive tackle, like you're drafting backups for backups. So but if you get, because... if you're getting like a, a Jonathan Ogden or something like that, though, man, you got to take it. Of yeah. course. Of course. You know, you know, I mean, so I, I agree with that in the sense that, it's about who's available, what it mm-hmm. is. You don't take a tackle just because that's your need top five yeah. anymore, but you, you take it because he's a, a perennial, you know, Hall of Famer, you know, all pro. He's a guy who's going to step in and play right now too, right? Uh, but you don't yeah. do that just because you need it, right? You don't just draft, you know, a Robert Gallery if you're the Raiders, right? <laughs> oh, we have to uh, talk but... about Raiders draft. <laughs> Well, that was like what last year, right? Didn't we have two really good tackles go? Or well, I, didn't you trade or cut one of your tackles? You drafted pretty high. Oh well, we traded him. You're you're the Bears took him from us. I know the trade. <laughs> um, I thought they they just picked him up, <laughs> or was no, it the, for like the, a late round? No, they yeah. So the Raiders got actually draft compensation from a guy that even sucks on the Bears. <laughs> that the Bears are having to take a tackle in the top ten, right? <laughs> um, yeah, there was three o- offensive tackles taken in the top ten last year. Yeah, but I mean, Tavera. Did any of them? I mean, I guess I, I didn't. I think Evan Neal. Did they move him to guard? I can't even remember if. And then across from Seattle did all right, and Echo No knew from the Panthers, but none of them stood out like an. But we're 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 talking about all this draft stuff, but I heard some crazy stuff today about Lamar Jackson and what teams are actually thinking. You know, because of course everyone has to want Lamar Jackson. You know, we all want to. You know, every team wants to be like, hey. There's two hundred million dollars guaranteed. Nobody wants it, <laughs> but they they said even the Lions, the Detroit Lions, might be a candidate. Oh yeah, I mean, well, right now they're throwing all kinds of teams out there right now, but oh, it's the Colts, it's the Lions, and the Texans right now. Yeah, if you're a if you're a team with a top five pick, I mean, and you can get Lamar Jackson, why wouldn't you just take Jackson and use your pick somewhere else? Yeah, I mean, right. That's so. the The thing about the Lions, it would be it's really hard for them to take him. But if if they added Lamar Jackson, that would be a, a really. I never team. thought about the Lions until today. 
Yeah, no, but I, it I, is yeah. kind of interesting. Oh shoot, it's getting tight. Yeah, if um, the Ravens take golf back, right? Yeah, and get some compensation <laughs> with it. I mean, right. Yeah, I would. Uh, I think the Lions would be dangerous with Jackson, but it, it seems it definitely seems like he really wants out, and now the Ravens are almost open to it a little more. Um, it's just the logistics behind making it happen are going to be really tough. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of like what you're running into with Rogers right now, you know. Yeah, Every, everybody's calling Rogers a jet, but <laughs> yet they still can't get the deal done. Right. And so, you know, how, how do you, how do you keep calling him a jet and he's not even on the team? Uh, I saw this uh, ESPN article about who's, who's going to be the best AFC East team between the jets and the bills. And it's like, well, you're, you're talking about the jets with Rogers. He ain't even on the team. Yeah. That can all fall through really quick. Right. (laughs) So I have a, so that for me, the Lamar Jackson thing's hard because it's, there's so many logistics that are going to come with that. Is he actually going to go anywhere at all? Yeah. Well, then once you get trade, you have to come up with a contract too. Yeah. Well, the what the thing about Lamar Jackson is, he's a free agent next year. No, they could still franchise him again. Right. Well, they could, but that would be stupid. Like. Not if, if they can't if trade they, him. They, they, they're going to franchise him this year, and he's a free agent next year. And, you know, if they can't get a deal done by then, it's like, you know, like I said, there's teams out there. Like, I actually I think it'd be kind of cool like the, the Vikings trade for him. You know, straight across. You yeah, know, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Uh, and, sounds like a good yeah, deal for Baltimore. <laughs> Oh, that's a – yeah. It's like, can you imagine Lamar Jackson going to the Vikings? I mean, at this point, you got to you gotta think that, uh, you know, 25 teams Lamar Jackson looks great on. The know? Dolphins. <laughs> and what is all this stuff about Tom Brady in Florida? Like, have you seen <laughs> the pitchers? Like, what is this, like – you know, this is so manufactured. What you really want to play for the Dolphins? I mean, he's coming out of retirement. He's, about? he's pulling and a he's Jordan. Retired, and now well, they forfeited just, their like, first round pick because of it, right? Right. Might yeah. as well get him. <laughs> and now, and that's why you know the Dolphins aren't in on Mar Jackson. They have no first round pick this year. Right. Yeah. They can't trade for him. No. It's okay. They have Mike White. They don't really have assets. <laughs> I mean, like, well, they just people. traded all their assets for uh, Tyree Kill and Bradley Chubb. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> On their defense, I mean, but they, I mean, they added, you know, Jalen Ramsey, you know, so that was a, that's a decent add there. And, um, but yeah, I mean, you, you just look at every team, like I said, you know, 75 80% of the teams look better with Lamar Jackson on the team. So you can you know, you go down the list of that. Uh, what teams can realistically get him and are willing to trade for him? And what about the Niners? Kind of contract? Did, you hear, did you hear about the Niners and Lamar <laughs> Jackson? That should not even be allowed. Like, screw <laughs> you, dude. That would make the Niners just like unstoppable. Well, if, yeah. if you, well, because they got a first rounder from somebody, right? I forgot how they got. Can you imagine that Lamar Jackson and you know Debo Samuel? I mean, it's not yeah. even fair. <clears throat> if you're if they were the Ravens, you say I want Trey Lance and three firsts, right? Right. Because if you're the Niners, I'm like, oh, I'm thinking these firsts are all going to be late, so it's almost like seconds. So you should be inclined to say, sure, why not? And and the thing, what I heard, you know, someone explained today about the Ravens thinking behind it, they're, you know, they just don't feel very comfortable giving someone like Lamar Jackson that much money because they've never built their team around a quarterback. They built their team around defense, you know? And so 
part of it is like, well, you know, they almost want to let him go. Like, hey, you know, it's not the way we do things here. You yeah, know? they never had a Lamar Jackson, though. Yeah, but that's he hasn't played thing. in the last two years at the end of the season. But either. see, yeah. that's the thing. It's like they're looking at him like he, he's great. I mean, if you look at the – they average just with Lamar Jackson, and they've only had one first – round pick on offense it, since he's been around they average 20 points a game when he's on the field right i mean it is ridiculous and mm-hmm. that is why lamar jackson's asking for the money that he's asking he's like dude i average 20 points when i'm on the field with no first round you know picks on the, offense the issue though is you're talking about a running quarterback half his game I is know. running right and now you want to guarantee money to a get to a running quarterback, and I think that's their hesitation. Oh, is of course. You can understand. Is... You can understand both sides, right? I can right. understand both sides. Like Lamar Jackson's, like, look at this, and then you know, it's like, well, you know what, Lamar? It's like you run around. I mean, you're not like Joe Burrow here. I mean, Joe Burrow can exist in the league till he's forty, just throwing the rock. He right. can throw the football. He can throw the ball anywhere on the field. Lamar Jackson can't. He's not that. He's not that good of a passer, but he's dynamic as a runner. Yeah, that's the dilemma here. But you know, here's the thing: the Ravens did. They got. They drafted two wide receivers, pretty high for Lamar Jackson, right? Rashad yeah. Bateman is a first rounder. I thought. I thought yeah, I thought Bateman. There's one. Is there two? Well, um, was Marquise was Brown. The second yeah, rounder? No, yeah, Hollywood. I don't think it was the first movie. I don't remember. I know Bateman I was, was. I was just listening to ESPN stats. Yeah. Um, but still, I no, mean. Br- he, Brown was a first rounder, too. He's 25th yeah. overall. So yeah. they gave him more than the Packers ever gave Aaron Rodgers. Oh. <laughs> Brutal. I mean. Brutal. <laughs> yeah, but the Packers had opportunities to do it. They chose not to. Right. Which is kind of stupid. Well, they the Packers <laughs> always love to play that that late late game drafting of of receivers. They're like we're picking out the the diamond in the rough, you know. They've done that for years. But they've Even got though. some good diamonds. I mean, they've gotten oh, some yeah. good guys late, right? Dude, Christian Watson had nine touchdowns after you know every after everyone was like talking. Oh, Christian Watson, he actually had nine touchdowns. I mean, it was starting <laughs> to come together for for the Packers, and then talent you know, wise, though talent wise and <laughs> athletically, Christian Watson was the best receiver in the draft. He just couldn't yeah. catch the ball. Right, stone hands, stone hands. <laughs> oh, I mean. Yeah. Don't throw it to stone hands. And then, oh, at the, and then you saw the the first game. How many right. did he drop? Oh, yeah, yeah, first pass. Remember, <laughs> first pass. It's like a seventy five yard touchdown. It drops it right in his hands, and he just dropped it. And Aaron Rodgers yeah. is just like, no, that didn't happen. That's probably the point where it's like <laughs> in the Jets. Yeah, yeah, that was a tough one. Um, overall, though, before we jump, go back to I want to talk just one more thing about football. This year's draft, it doesn't it seem like there's a lot of like fuel of the fire around this year's draft. There's just so much stuff happening, a lot of good players, you know, potential of where people are going, trades, all this stuff. I, I feel like. It, I, for me, it's been, been, been a while since a draft was like this hyped and this much stuff going around. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, oh. you have <laughs> four quarterbacks could go top four. You got Jalen Carter. How far is he dropping? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think he's dropped too far. Mm-hmm. And honestly, oh, honestly I, I, I would more think that the Bears, Jalen Carter. You know, I mean, Please. either or, either or, but if you're at nine, you can either get Jalen Carter or mm-hmm. your number one uh, offensive lineman in the draft. That's pretty. That's a steal. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, the Raiders, they're saying reports of the Raiders have already taken him off their draft board. Right. Carter. Yeah, Carter. Raiders. Wow, I mean, because they, they, I think, I think they think they're going to get Richardson. I think they're well. They're Raiders can't take any more chances on <laughs> on guys who have potential off field issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like they have oh, to eliminate yeah. that. <laughs> they're like, they're like, you know what? We just can't take the chance. Because <laughs> well, they're lucky. The Carter's available, but the Raiders and the quarterbacks are gone. They would, I would, I would oh, yeah. they trade down. Yeah. Because somebody's, I mean, you would, you would, you would think that some team is gonna not let him slip, right? At some point, you'd be like, Carter's on the board still. I got to take him. Well, how far did Laramie Tunsil fall? Remember, because wasn't he? Everyone thought he'd be number one, right? The year he came out, the uh, tackle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, jeez. <laughs> Well, because he went to the Texans, right? No, he went to the was Dolphins, the Texans? I think. He got traded to the Texans. Wait, he's traded to the Texans, okay. He was a Dolphin, I think, first. Let's see here. Huh. Yeah. yeah. He fell to the Dolphins at 13. Wow. So, you know, Bears could still pull Carter. But then oh, again, it's like, do you take him, right? I mean, it's that's that's the danger in that pick. Like obviously yeah. he's a great <laughs> talent, but I would I would almost I would almost want uh you know the you know, the tackle. I feel like and, Ryan Poles, he's he's like this play it safe guy, you know? Yeah. yeah. The safe pick. Yeah. Well, I mean, one thing is the whole street racing thing the other thing is is coming severe overweight and not being able to finish your drills right right yeah you got two issues there now i get it if i'm him and you go into your interviews you just basically lay it on the table and go i was depressed this whole right. thing was going on um i've been seeking help it's behind me now and i'm getting in shape and i feel better but right i wasn't was, focused yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a tough one. Um, but the close the the closer the draft gets, I think uh, the more exciting some of this stuff will get, and the more I think you'll start to see some moves, some people more put their cards on the table. You know what they're gonna do, and I'll be live from Disney World. <laughs> live from Disney draft. World, that's right? <laughs> live from Disney World. Okay, so uh let's get let's get into our NCAA uh our picks. Uh, um <laughs> well. uh, but, but first let's talk a little bit about uh our sweet sixteen. Oh jeez. Debacle. Uh, uh, debacle, uh, right? Debacle. <laughs> so we gotta apologize to the listeners. <laughs> the experts. Wait yeah, a minute, but, hold on, we're the experts. At least I do, because man, no, we I, all do. We all pretty much. Uh, yeah, it was bad, right? It was bad. Um, but there was some good, fun, uh, Sweet Sixteen games, right? I mean, oh, it was great. I I don't care. Like, you know, Miami made my day. The it was Kansas awesome State to see to you, like Can Kansas State, Steve Michigan Texas. State, dude. Mm -hmm. Just anytime Texas loses, I'm happy. Right. But to, for to lose to Miami, it reminded me like the the ninety one Cotton Bowl when Miami beat Texas like forty to three. I was like, yes, the ninety one Cotton Bowl. Oh yeah, that was said. one of the great games ever. But yeah, so in the Sweet Sixteen, we lost the ones. Right. So Houston and Alabama both lose, right? Yeah. And uh, Houston. Didn't look good at all. They looked just horrible. Uh, Alabama should have won that game, and they just lost it in the second half. They just fell apart. So you have, you know, that right right away, you know, your Sweet 16 is, is busted up because both your ones lose. Um, UCLA loses, so another two goes. Yeah, the UCLA game, crazy because it looks like UCLA is dominating the game, and they just fall apart. 
But the Michigan State Kansas State game, awesome game. That was really fun to watch. No, I uh, Florida Atlantic uh, Tennessee game, fun to watch. I enjoyed that game. Uh, UConn again just dominated Arkansas, just murdered them. And then, uh, of course, Creighton gets to play Princeton to get into the Elite Eight. Uh, Xavier, Texas. That was a high scoring game. I think I don't think Xavier played as well as they could have in that game. No, it did. But that was that's a tough matchup for him. Like, yeah. I think Xavier is good. But you know, Texas, Texas is a beast. I mean they're just too athletic. Yeah. Yeah. And and Xavier's not one of those teams that's gonna come in super athletic. You know, they're gonna come in as a play some good <laughs> team basketball, defense. Uh, so, yeah, the Sweet 16 debacle, I mean, yeah, just across the board, it was crazy. And then from there, and, we were just rooting for anarchy, right? <laughs> right, at that point. So now at this point, we get the Elite Eight. I did. You know, I had 25 it. brackets. I had three brackets left. It was Creighton. <laughs> it was all Creighton. It was freaking Creighton. I'm like, all right, well, I don't care now. You know what sucks about it is, so I didn't know about the 25 thing, like, you can only do 25 brackets to be in the money. So I'm like, okay, last bracket, I'm picking Miami to win the national title. They're like, er, you're cut off. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, come on. I got to pick Miami to win. And then all of a sudden, Miami's the final four. It's you amazing know, you did 25 brackets, and I geez. still beat you with one. <laughs> um, okay. That's funny. Uh, so, although, so Elite Eight, right? Obviously, we don't get a, didn't get a chance to pick those games, but the Elite Eight games were outside of the UNC or UConn Gonzaga game. They were They're really games. good games. Yeah, it was really fun to watch the Elite Eight. Um, you know, they all were close. They had swings, and you had teams like, Florida Atlantic playing Kansas State and Creighton playing San Diego State. It just wasn't your your typical Elite Eight. Mm -hmm. And then they were good games on top of that. So, <laughs> you know, as poorly as the Sweet 16 went, I kind of felt like it made the Elite Eight more fun to watch. I know this yeah. is bad being in the Pacific Northwest, but it cracked me up completely the way Gonzaga just got rolled after everyone's like, oh, God. oh, the monkeys, you know, they make it to the lead eight, lost so many years. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and then they just, Drew Timmy's the greatest. <laughs> and they just got rolled. Well, it was, a, it was a good game for the first 15 minutes, right? And then the last five minutes of the first half, UConn starts to pull away and you just feel it happening. Like you, you feel that you, you felt like it just slipping out of Gonzaga's hands, and then the second half starts, and then it just is just gets ugly. Yeah, you know, it was it like was... years past Gonzaga where they couldn't hit a three point shot, but they kept shooting them. Right, and they weren't even close shots. Either. There were so many bricks. You know what's interesting is there's a there's a few games that I was watching and it's like you just like stop shooting three pointers. You're like for the love of God, <laughs> you're one for fifteen. <laughs> yeah. um, that was like me a few years ago when Illinois had Cockburn, and he was like the big dude in the middle who couldn't be stopped, and they kept shooting threes and I'm like, <laughs> what are you? doing? doing right <clears throat> yeah it, it was uh and obviously you know gonzaga they have good shooters but they just you know they weren't making anything and it just got real ugly there so that wasn't the funnest game to watch but i think the other three games were great and uh so uh, that puts us into the final four so we got san diego state and florida atlantic and we got miami and, and connecticut they're both on Saturday. Championship first Monday. game. First game, San Diego State. Florida Atlantic. What do you got? Wes, why don't you lead us off? Uh, 
I'm taking San Diego State just because defensively they they seem like they have it figured out. Like over the years, they have they had this philosophy on defense. They just couldn't quite put it all together offensively. I think they'll do enough to beat Florida Atlantic. Give us a give us a score. Well, it's like sixty three to fifty eight. Sixty three fifty eight San Diego State. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go Florida Atlantic. I think San Diego State's defense is really good, but I really want to see Florida Atlantic in the championship. <laughs> and uh, although when I was watching them, because I haven't watched them much, but the last two games, I watched both games almost all the way through, right? They have some real talent on their team. And not just like talent because they're playing for Florida Atlantic, right? Talent because these guys are legit players. Uh, yeah. One of their guys is a transfer from, uh, oh, you're talking about the Kentucky guy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so watching them, I don't think they, they're they your typical where you would normally like put Florida Atlantic, you know, in a tournament as far as their skill level. Um, I just like their player. I think they have some really solid uh, players on their team. And they have, uh, you know, a nice big guy playing solid. So I'm gonna go Florida Atlantic, and I'm gonna get. I'm gonna say 65-55. I'm gonna give him ten. Oh man! I so it's kind of interesting. So Florida Atlantic is thirty-five and three this year. Right. That's crazy. San Diego State's thirty-one and six. So it's not like. We have another scrub here. No, I just they look, won a lot of games. I look at it and I know we're in 2023, but the old adage will still stands. Defense wins championships. <laughs> and Steve, your score, the last five games, only once has San Diego State given up more than 60 points. And that was to Alabama. And that was 64 points. Um, yeah, Alabama is so, not that good, though. <laughs> obviously, obviously. <laughs> so, I'm going to be taking San Diego State 65 54. Ooh, 54. That's even lower. Yep. All right. Well, I so we'll see what happens here. I'm going, I'm going the other way. There you go. Are you All talking right, about so, Florida? Are you doing Florida Atlantic and Miami in the final? No, no. Uh, so for the next game, I'm definitely picking UConn. It's hard. I, I would love to. I would love to see a good game here. I'd love to see even Miami potentially win. I just don't think the way UConn's playing right now. Um, Miami's got a tough task ahead of them. I like the way Miami hustles though, and I like the way they move. And I think this will be a one of the biggest tests for UConn to this point, just because of the athleticism Miami has. But the dominance UConn has, especially in the middle, it's just too it's hard for the be hard for Miami to play against. So um, I I think UConn wins, you know, seventy five to to sixty one. Well, you know who I'm taking. I'm well, riding the yeah. horse. You got to. <laughs> um, but here's the thing is, I talk about San Diego State's defense. UConn's only given up 59 points per game this season. But they've got an offense, too, because they're averaging 78 points. Right. Brutal. Miami gives up 70 points a game. So <clears throat> the defense isn't really there. I got to take UConn anyway. It didn't matter who they were playing. I'm taking UConn. (laughs) Yeah. And the way this tournament has gone, I just got, I got to go UConn, UConn by at least 10. I'm going to go UConn 80, Miami 
68. 12 points. Yeah. 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 That 80 mark. I, that's a tough one. Cause I think they can hit that 80 mark, but um, I, I think Miami might hold them to the 75. So we'll see. What do you got Wes? UConn. I really want Miami to win, but UConn just, it's just, they're playing so well. I mean, just the way they dismantled Gonzaga, you know, it was just, it was hard to watch, but you just had that feeling like the stupidity of me not picking them. Like I should have picked UConn. Why would I pick Alabama? I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> like, cause I've been, I've been watching UConn. I'm like, dude, UConn's legit. And, um, yeah, I I have to, even though I really want Miami, but UConn just it's just too much for Miami. So, yeah, I what's think your, it's gonna be, I score? think it's gonna be closer. Closer. I think it's gonna be closer, like in the seventies. But I'm taking UConn. Okay, so we got uh, UConn and the championship. All three of us, and then you guys got San Diego State. I got Florida Atlantic. So, Derek, what's your uh, final prediction? Going against my board, I'm taking UConn to win it all instead of losing in the national championship. <laughs> yeah, because um, Alabama's not there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just – this is going to be a good one because it's just too – I don't know, San Diego State, are they going to be able to go up against UConn's defense? Because they have a deep, both teams have a great defense, and but UConn has a whole lot better offense. So I've got yeah. it uh, 65 55 UConn winning. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's the thing about San Diego State. I mean, like I said, I think the, the whole Florida Atlantic can go either way on that, but. If it is UConn and San Diego State, you would think San Diego State, I mean, I'm picking UConn to win the whole thing. You know, the question is, is it going to be that low scoring? San Diego State sometimes, yes, has struggles to score points. And especially when you're going to play a team like UConn, you, you can't play, can play some defense. So, yeah, taking UConn. Yeah, it's tough. Not to think that at this point UConn has the best team, um, not only statistically, but also athletically. you got one of the better big men in the country. You've got one of the better shooters in the country. Your your team plays good team defense, and you score the score a lot. You know That sounds to me like a recipe for a championship. <laughs> so uh, as much as I'd love to see, even if San Diego State does beat Florida Atlantic, I'd like to see San Diego State win, uh, but I'd love to see Florida Atlanta uh, win a championship. I think that'd be awesome, but I just don't think uh, any of the four teams left have the firepower to beat UConn. So, so we're we're unanimous in that, and uh, I, I actually think UConn will probably blow out any team, either team. You know, you, I think by fifteen twenty it, points. It, 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 it could. It could be pretty ugly because yeah. the way they beat Gonzaga, Gonzaga was a pretty decent team. But their defense they, isn't great, though. They just dismantled Gonzaga. Yeah, they though. did. And none of these teams were much better than Gonzaga. Well, yeah, so the problem is I don't think those teams can put up enough points to beat them. No. Because they are. Miami. Yeah, Miami can score if they get out and they're running, right? If they're If they're keeping the pace fast. And they're they're playing a, a fast break game, uh, so yeah. Overall, yeah. But even in the championship game, I think UConn could could win by twenty, yeah. just because the other teams can't score enough. Yep. It's it's interesting to me. You know, we talked about parity and everything, but we're still going to have a blue blood maybe win it all. Right. They, they are a blue blood. Even it's like oh yeah, it's it's they, UConn has won three or four national championships since ninety nine. Since the only time I ever won money, <laughs> I, picked, I won I won a thousand dollars on UConn in '99, well, and we were in Mexico, 
And I was calling to get the money. I was like, Dad, can you wire me a thousand dollars in Mexico <laughs> when they beat Duke? Because everyone thought, oh, Duke's so great. I was like, no, I'm taking UConn. The only time I ever won the tournament was that. <laughs> UConn. The uh, the thing about UConn is is they are blue blood and and they're 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 underranked at their seed. As you look back at their season, right? As they started off hot, they had a little slump in the middle, and they finished There's hot. No way they should be a four seed, right? That's a pretty good. Yeah, four and uh, that was a that was my biggest miss in the tournament was UConn because um, I knew they were good, you know. And it's just like it's just one of those. The same reason, like I, I looked at teams like like Alabama. I was like, no, not picking them. Oh, dude, I wish I was that. Because because everything or Kentucky, (laughs) everything told me because I I've been I started watching I've watched more of college basketball than I have in the past, and I watched UConn. I was like, I really like UConn. Like, why am I not picking UConn? Why? Why would I pick Alabama? They have no tournament pedigree at all. Right. It's stupid. What am I? Why am I picking Alabama? <laughs> Stop. You didn't but pick least... UConn even to go to the Final Four, Wes. Huh? <laughs> I don't think I think I had them losing uh, to St. Mary's. No, I got. I I do. I I had. I picked. I think three brackets. UConn winning, but remember, I didn't go back far enough to pick all the. So screw my bracket. Yeah, you had them losing in the Sweet 16, Wes, in this bracket. I know. Let's just not look at the past. <laughs> yeah. Stop bringing up old stuff. The past. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, there there was quite a few misses. Uh, I think uh, looking back, you know, there's a couple games where even the, even the Princeton game, you know, when I was thinking – I was like, oh, Princeton, Arizona. Arizona's easily going to win this. And the first thing that popped in my mind was UCLA, Princeton. And I was like, oh. but what about UCLA, Princeton? Like, no. You know, and there's a bunch of those as I went through the tournament. And I was just like, I was like, no, the higher seeds are going to win. The higher seeds are going to win. <laughs> and then I was, but kind of shot myself in the foot with these picks. Well, like me, I went with history. I picked like three 12 seeds to be five seeds. All five seeds won this year. Right. <laughs> right. I did. I kind of did the same thing with, when I looked at, and now San Diego state, look at that. They might be in the championship game and Miami. That's two yeah. five seeds. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's crazy. Well, and Duke was a five seed. That's nuts. Mm-hmm. And North Carolina wasn't even in the tournament. Yeah, like what? What's college basketball become? Duke's a five seed, losing early. Carolina's not tournament. Kansas loses early. UConn's a four seed. UConn's a four seed. Jeez, Wes, off the topic bit, but you weren't for here for this podcast. <clears throat> Is Jim Beheim one of the best coaches ever? Best coaches like top ten, college basketball coaches like top five. Isn't that where we were said before? Top five. He's not a top five coach. No, he shouldn't be. He's is he even a top coach. ten coach. Well, here here's the thing. Well, no, I, I mean it's tough because I think he created a great defense that other team other teams should mirror his defense. It, his defense is legit. But he's only won one national title with Carmelo Anthony, which they were still lucky to win that. I mean, he's all right, but not top. I think he's maybe top 15 coach, not top 20, maybe. There's been a lot of good college basketball coaches. Well, there's definitely some tough, uh, some tough coaches to try to put them up against for sure. Well, because like if you go for a top five, you've got. Wooden, Shevsesky, Dean Smith. Then it's kind of like, do you go Roy Williams? Yeah, Roy Williams. Well, uh, we forgot Steve. Jim Calhoun. Right. Oh, Calhoun. He's got, he's got three national championships. Right. 
No one forgets about him. Well, because he's not a flashy coach. Mm-hmm. Bob he's Knight, baby. You got the biggest one, man. Bob Knight. Did he only win one national championship? Three. Won three. three. Won three. Oh, well, then he's got to be in the conversation. As- yeah, and he's – you know what? He's the last one to be undefeated. That's the last undefeated uh, college basketball team. I think it was 1976 that he was undefeated. Stupid Duke. If <laughs> well, They wanted to beat UNLV. Yeah, but you know, I mean, but everybody know. I mean, Bob Knight, he's definitely up there, right? There's, there's, yeah, there's too many coaches, and then, and then, even the modern day, even Bill Self, I think, is better than. I mean, Bill Self is a solid coach. Yeah, he's better than you know. Yeah, he he. Well, because he's yeah, not Bayheim, top five. You put you. I would put Bayheim with. Uh, John Thompson and Lute Olson and you know yeah. good coach good coaches that had like a good span. Like with Bayheim, he's just long been there forever. No, but he hasn't done him. much. Besides him. like a little like the little in the even in the eighties with Syracuse, uh they got beat by Georgetown, St. John, Villanova, Providence. You know Fucking what I mean? Tark, man. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying better. Syracuse wasn't one of the top five Big East schools when the Big East was yeah. in the heyday, right? You know, it, it's – I love I, – I, I feel I like all those teams – those teams were – for me, I thought – I felt like the Big East was really balanced back then. I thought you felt, felt like any team could win the Big East at any oh, time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Big East was legit back then. Yeah. Well, if you think, if you look at national, like championship games or national championships, you had Georgetown, Villanova, Providence, uh, Seton Hall played the Michigan. Yeah, Seton Hall was good. Seton Hall was good. Yeah. Yeah. What so, happened to Seton Hall? Well, I think the Big East in general just, it's fallen off for sure. Like Georgetown won like three games this year. Right. That's terrible. They're like Cal. Like Cal's the same way. I was like, how are you that bad? Well, nobody wants to play up there in the Northeast anymore. That's not. I mean, this you got a lot of other powerhouse schools, you know, that continued their I mean, see, and you talk about a guy like Bill Self, and I, I don't I believe he's a good coach, but I also believe he's a product of a really great school as well, you know. And the same well, thing with, with uh, you know, Roy Williams, he also – he definitely had success before North Carolina. But then you get to go to North Carolina, that's not fair. Yeah. Like, of course you're going to be a great coach. Because <laughs> you're coming in after Dean Smith built this, like, juggernaut yeah. of a team. It's like going into Duke now. You're like, you, you, but you're going to be a good coach, right? Because you could coach at Duke for the next 20 years and have a winning season every year, go to the tournament every year. And now you're going to be one of the best coaches ever. Yeah, it's true what you said about Bill Self. He kind of lucked into it because he didn't make any final fours or anything until he went to Kansas. Right. With, uh, he went to Oral Roberts, Tulsa, and Illinois before Kansas. And then when he got to Kansas, then it's like, you know, he's 56 to 22 in the tournament. <laughs> and he has two national championships, four final fours. And but you it's just, all and, with Kansas. Yeah, and these it's great teams, you know. I mean, great players. Kansas is one of those schools that you go there to get to the NBA. You know, and so – Although again, I don't think he's a bad coach, but I think there are products of systems. The the one thing you can say about Beheim is that he's been there forever, and it's been his system the whole time. He's played was it, it, coach it, for for forty years. Right, right, and, and and I think other coaches could do better with his system. He, he it's like his defensive philosophy is great. But well, that's not the question. He didn't, he didn't really achieve what he should have achieved. Would other coaches do better at Syracuse? I I thought um I honestly was disappointed with Duke. I thought because I think the dude that took over, I thought 
he was going to be, he, he had something to prove. And, you know, you never know. I mean, because, you know, I mean, what if you, what if Rick Patino was Syracuse's coach instead of Kentucky's coach? Oh, we're, mi- we're missing the, the obvious top 10. Well, choices. Patino, it was a Providence and he was, he won more than. When 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 Patino was at Providence, he did better than Jim Bayheim at Syracuse. Yeah. Providence. I mean Providence, yeah. we just talked about them. They were pretty solid back then. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's because of Patino. <laughs> did you say Pacino or Patino? <laughs> no, Patino. Pacino. Well, so what was Patino's record at Providence and what was Byheim's record at Syracuse oh, for those know. years. Okay, well, let me look. I can get you Patino's. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, Patino's is easy. No, the, I, I guess the question about Bayheim is is, is uh, would other coaches have done better if in his position, you know? Well, I mean. It, so Patino was only at Providence for two years. No, but he went no. 40, 42 and 23. Well, that's not that great. Well, his first year, they went 17 and 14. And then the next year, they went 25 and 9 and went to the final four. So, so in two he years, he made one final four. But that means, here's the thing, is what was um, Providence before Patino, right? Because that that be... Was that Raleigh Massimino? I don't even know. <laughs> Raleigh Massimino. You know, it's, I like watching college <laughs> basketball, but I'm not, no, I don't understand it that. as much as I do the NFL. No, well, it is. So back to the, the, the Bayheim thing for a second. He's obviously not a top five mm-hmm. coach for sure. No, right? absolutely not. He's probably not a top ten. No. You know, top and then maybe, maybe but low. You, you're talking about a lot of because think of how many colleges there are, right? So now you're ranking against a lot of coaches. Yeah. It's kind of unfair. I mean, it is what it is. He had his own niche, you know. Yeah, I, I mean I, I don't I don't like support him and be like, yeah, he's, he's a great coach, but I don't think he, I don't think you could take him out of the conversation as a great coach. Yeah. You don't coach 40 years at a place, you know, unless and, you're, a, you're a school that's cheap and just want to keep the same guy. <laughs> and you don't want to deal I've, with it and just let I've, him deal with it. I haven't looked at it, but I feel like he probably has a decent win percentage over those years. Yeah, you know, let's look here. Can't be that bad, right? Because if they get no. have a real bad win percentage, then you fire him. He is 60, about almost 70%. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. So if you're playing 30 games a, a season, he's winning 21 games a, a season. Um, yeah, average of 20, 20, 20 wins a season, that's good. <laughs> let's look so I yeah, feel so like he just does really doesn't have like him. if you are going by that I don't know, uh, this must be well right now he's number two all time in wins right Um, this must be old because it has him over 70 like at 70 percent but it's like 69 points 69 7 uh calhoun was about 70 percent roy williams 77 percent bob knight 70 percent dean smith 77 percent we never mentioned adolph rupp yeah 82 <laughs> percent jeez that's pretty uh, eddie that's sutton good. eddie sutton had a better winning percentage than jim Beheim. Hmm. Lute Olson, 73%. Cal Perry, 76. 
Bill oh, Self. We, we forgot about Cal Perry. Yeah. <laughs> Cal Perry. Bill Self, 76. So, I mean, they're all, they're all in go. the 70s. Bo Ryan. Bo Ryan? Okay. Yeah. I'm lost. Milwaukee and Wisconsin. You know, Wisconsin Green Bay. Yeah. Right. Uh, 76 percent he has 747 career wins no. john cheney 70 percent john cheney temple john cheney. <laughs> Wes. Wes. <laughs> park 78 percent i already said that 78 <laughs> percent i know but he's 78 <laughs> percent dark Patino, 70%. So if we go by Izzo, 72%. Oh, what are we talking about? Do we even bring up Izzo? Well, we did on our last pot. Well, one yeah, more. Yeah. Two. yeah. Izzo, yeah. But, you, I mean, and you're not talking, though, like, Beheim was 50% and everybody else is in the 70s, right? Oh, He's right, right there with on. everybody else. They're even better. The, okay. The guy that won two national champions for Florida. Oh, I know. I said Billy Donovan. Yeah, Billy, Billy Donovan. Donovan. Like <laughs> he doesn't like like Steve said though. Longevity wise, well, of course, behind been for forever. I mean, though, like, like Donovan, the dude you don't want to fire. I get it. You know. Yeah, you don't <laughs> fire a guy who wins seventy percent of his games for forty years. Yeah, can't do it. Yeah. Let's see, Donovan. I'm just trying to get to it here. Billy Donovan. I just want I just want head coaching record. There we go. It's gracious. It's well, hard to throw at, in those short term coaches. At Florida, he okay, so he's over 70%. Florida is 72%. Outside of Florida was 64%, though. <laughs> But that's kind of it's skewed because it was two seasons at Marshall that kind of messed up the whole percentage. Right. But yeah, yeah. college coaching is a hard one though too because you also like you lose a lot of games throughout the year. There's very few teams that go you know thirty five and three like Florida Atlantic is right now. That's just. That's rare. Even yeah. back in the day, I mean, we, there was some teams that obviously had their runs, but most of your teams playing in the Final Four and the National Championships were like 27 and 8, you know, by the time they got there. Or, you know, they were already in that 75%, you know, win percentage already. So that was that was kind of common, I think, for college right. basketball. I just, you know, my soapbox is Jim Beheim was a good coach. Not a great coach. Comparatively, yeah. If you're if you're trying to compare him against some of the greatest coaches, you can't put him next to some of those guys. I don't think. Um, though I don't think that doesn't mean he's a great coach. Uh, comparatively, is different than just saying if this guy's a great coach or not. Right. Because I mean, it's hard to compare. It's like you know, comparing. Vince Carter to Michael Jordan, you know, Vince Carter's a great player, I think, but when you put him next to Michael Jordan, yeah, he's not but great would anymore. You, would you ever put <laughs> Vince Carter in a top 15 all time? That's a tough one. Probably not. No, not all time. And that's what people are doing with Bayheim. He's a good coach, <laughs> maybe a great coach, but I don't think I would, if I was drafting, Coaches, he wouldn't be in my top 15. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's definitely tough. Unless you had to have a coach that was going to coach for 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> then you would want him real. <clears throat> like, you need a coach for 50 years. I'm taking Bayheim. That's true. You win one national championship in 50 years. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I know I get it. I, I think uh, it's hard to compare him to the greats for sure. There's too many really, really good college basketball coaches out there. So, 
All right. Well, here's what we got. We got final four picks. You guys got San Diego State. I got FAU. We all got UConn over Miami. And we got UConn winning the championship. So if we can't get the final four right, <laughs> this is going to be tough, guys. I wouldn't put anything past it. Breach has only four teams. <laughs> right. Like it's going to be like Miami and FAU, then Miami's going to win the championship. It is. No, I, I, think, I don't care. No, I, I'm that, rooting for UConn win. for those purposes of getting a little bit more points, even though it's still horrible. But I'd really like whoever wins Ford Atlantic San Diego State to win, right? Right. Because at I, least I would too. Miami and UConn are two powerhouses. I know Miami's not so much in <laughs> basketball, but they are a powerhouse school. Yeah, it's a huge school, right? So they're they're a they're a sports school. I just you know. all I want to see is the U represented at the game. <laughs> I want to see like Michael Irvin. And Ray oh, Lewis. man. And freaking Sean yeah, yeah. Taylor. I want to see him fall <laughs> up there. Like... Yeah. I don't know how Sean. Do you know Toretta? See Sean Taylor, dude. Or do you know Toretta? <laughs> yeah, you, you might see uh, <laughs> the ghost of Sean Taylor. <laughs> uh, Morton Sapp. I, I think it would be. I, I agree is I think I would love to see either San Diego State or FAU in because of that same reason. It's like, cause neither of those are ever been a real powerhouse school that you're like, man, they won a championship, big deal, you know? Cause especially if one of those two teams win, you're, it is a big deal, right? <laughs> like you look at that, you're like, well, you're like, great. You know, look at teams, smaller schools or smaller you know, teams, anybody, guys that don't necessarily get the best recruits or win a championship. Think about it. Anybody but UConn wins is a big deal. It is. I mean, even Miami winning, it's, it's a massive deal. Right. They but not as big as San Diego State or Florida, though. Oh, yeah. Florida Atlantic. But yeah, it is, well, right? It will be history. If Florida Atlantic wins, they'll be the highest seed, you know, the lowest yeah. seed to, uh, to ever win. Right. Eight, eight, Villanova still has a record. This many, 1985, they have the record. They eight were an eight seed. The eight seed, right? Yeah. So we we should all be rooting for Florida Atlantic. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that our picks, fun to make it to the finals. Uh, our, our, our picks, and I will say overall, what's crazy too is that this is you know ranking wise of what i'm ranked against all my other, all other everybody else i've never been this low on my bracket <laughs> ranking i know you know you know i'm never like up in you know the top but i'm never like this far down this is as far as i've been on a bracket ranking before <laughs> well this is how bad it is my bracket is totally effed and the only if UConn makes it to the finals, my score will be 730. Okay. Right. <laughs> right now, how bad it has been, I'm still in the 93 percentile. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's how bad it is. Like mine has been horrible. This has like been one of the worst, like you said, the worst ever. I and was I was 94 percentile with Creighton. I had Florida Atlantic. And Gonzaga, I was 94 percentile. With Indiana making the final losing to Creighton. So it's bad. Like everyone's. Well, that yeah, just means how many people slept on UConn, right? Right. A lot that's, of the only team, that's the only team giving me any points. Well, Wes, you are in the 6 percent. Uh, <laughs> percentile in our in our league. Does it say what percentile he is? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm 36. My, uh, Elena, my sister, is 60, and you're 93. <laughs> Wes is six. <laughs> Dude, that's brutal. <laughs> I thought 36 was bad. Man, you're making me feel better, Wes. <laughs> Obviously, this was the worst of his 25 brackets, and he just <laughs> happened to put it in this one. 
Well, and it looked like he had a pretty good, you know, because he had Alabama winning and so did you. Yeah. You both had Alabama winning. That's kind of weird. Less is 6% as you're missing 6%, Derek. I know. <laughs> yeah, should have collaborated on that 6%. All right, well, let's wrap it up here. Any uh, any final words here? It's March Madness coming up this weekend. Should be fun. It's going to be crazy, yeah. It's kind of a roller coaster. I always kind of enjoy the first few days, like Thursday and Friday of the first week, because it's like it's, it's an anomaly. Because, you know, you're at work or you're whatever, and you're still trying to watch the games, and there's so many games. And then it becomes kind of like, oh, Every game starts at like three o'clock or something after yeah. that. So it's kind of sad, but and your bracket's busted anyway. Like the beginning, yeah. you're like tracking your bracket every game. You're like, who's winning this game? Who's winning that game? Well, you know, because the other games, my wife and son are both at school and you know work, <laughs> so I'm able to watch them. When they show after they, all the other games have been after that. It's hard. It's like on my phone, kind of with the yeah. mute, with the sound. So, but it's, it's, this is a crazy year and I kind of hope for, it would be fitting the Florida Atlantic one. Yeah. But. Yeah. Saturday games and Monday's championship game. So that'll be fun to watch. Uh, uh, Lamar Jackson, does he stay with Baltimore or does he go? Wes, that's your guy. I don't care. I say he stays. I think he stays. Potentially, yeah. It, it, it seems like that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And then uh, the Jets get a deal done with Rodgers? Yes. Yeah. Probably. They I better. Have I have a choice. I think they have to, right? I think both you have, have to make something happen at this point, right? Yeah. There you have it. Aaron Rodgers to the Jets. Lamar stays in Baltimore. <laughs> Econ wins the tournament. Aaron Rodgers to the Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Lamar to the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> Lamar to the Packers just to screw with the Jets. They could have Jordan Love. Oh, jeez. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys next time.